In this video I'm going to show you how you can customize a G3 vector character in Cartoon Animator without losing the vector format of the character. Hi there, I'm David Arundel, otherwise known as the Extraordinary Tourist and sometimes known as the Lazy Animator. And in this video I'm going to be looking at customizing vector characters without losing their vector format. And to explain that a little bit more with the recent release of Cartoon Animator 5.02, we've gained the ability to export our new uh, G3 vector characters out to a PSD editor so that we can customize them. Uh, unfortunately, what that does is rasterizes the vector character and turns it into a PSD character rather than a vector character. So you lose that resolution independence and it becomes the same type of character as the original G3 PSD type characters. But in saying that, now that we can export those characters, it gives you a workflow to be able to customize existing vector characters like customize the sprites in, a, in existing vector characters and then bring them back in uh, as vector sprites to the original characters without having to compromise and have the character rasterized and turned into a PSD character. So I'm going to run you through a demonstration of that. Hopefully it's not going to be too long, but we'll see how we go. Okay, so here I've got Cartoon Animator 5 open. And on the screen now you can see this Johnny character that comes free with Cartoon Animator 5. On the left here is the original character. And on the right here is my customized version of the character that is still in a vector format. Uh, those of you with a sharp eye may notice that the original character has a very square chin and face whereas my customized version now has a round face. So the demonstration I'm going to take you through is how I customized his face sprite into a round face sprite without having to rasterize the whole character and lose the vector nature and resolution independence that we have. So this is the workflow we have, and I'm going to take myself off the screen for the rest of this. So to begin with, we just take the original character into the composer and you'll see now with this button for vector characters is now active and if I click on that, the entire character will now be exported into my PSD graphics editor and I'm just going to go with the default settings for that. So I'm just going to send that through and that's going to open up in Critter for me because Critter is my preferred vector editing software. I'll just bring that over here. What you can see here, uh, this is the character opened up in Critter. And if I was to save this now, because this is currently linked to Cartoon Animator, and if I hit save, uh, my character in Cartoon Animator would immediately be rasterized and no longer a vector. So I'm not going to do that. The first thing you need to do is actually save this file out. Do save as and just save it to somewhere where you can find it again. Now I'm, going to, I'm going to save it here and just give it a name. Dash mod, we call it mod 2. And effectively that should disconnect it from Cartoon Animator. But just to be sure, uh, I would go back to Cartoon Animator and shut down the composer uh, just to break this connection so you don't accidentally save it as a rastered file. You see uh, this is still a vector character. Pretty much tell that by when I zoom in, uh, you'll see that all these lines are still say it's staying perfectly sharp. Zoom that back out again. So now that link's broken, what I'm going to do is to just save a bit of time. I'm going to go with uh, my file that I created earlier. So I'm going to close this one down that I saved. This is the one that I exported earlier and you can see Still got the square jaw here, and I went through to the face sprite uh, in the layers menu here, and I've actually made a round face sprite. So I'll turn this one off, and I'll turn my round face sprite on. So that's my round face sprite there, and I think I actually made this a bit lower in the finished 
document, so I made it more down there or something like that. But it doesn't matter because the next step for that, modifying it now that I've got my round face that I want, to simply copy that layer. I'm going to do right click on it and copy layer. And then I'm going to paste it into a new document. So we go edit, paste into new image. And there is my face layer there. And you'll see that's pretty much a raster bitmap face shape. But what we're going to do is take this into my vector software and we're going to trace it. So first things first, I need to do save as. Save this as a PNG file. And you'll see I've already got one that I made earlier. So I'm just going to save on top of that because it's the same sprite virtually replace it go okay to this and now we're completely done with my vec with my graphics software i'm going to close that down and we're going to open up my vector software which for me is inkscape and i've got a new document open it's a the default document i haven't done any sizing to the page or anything like that there's nothing in here as you can see if i go to layers it's just got a single layer nothing in there no templates or anything that you have to open and i'm just going to go file import an image and we're going to get this round bitmap face that i saved as a png file and go open i'm just going to bring it in the default settings go OK and we'll just set it up in the document. Uh, just for the sake of it, I'm going to put it in the middle of the document. It doesn't really matter if it's selected. And I'm going to trace it using the trace bitmap option. You'll see here uh, the trace function has come up. Now I've got the setting on auto trace because this is such a basic shape. Uh, I really don't need to do anything more than that. So it's auto trace, uh, all the default settings, and this is a preview of what it's going to look like. I'm just going to go apply, and that image will be auto traced. So if I go and select the point editing things, you can see all these points of where it's been traced. If I go to layers, you'll see now I've got my original image here, and then I've got path that was traced. Uh, I don't need the original image anymore. So I can delete that and I'm just left with the path here. And all I'm going to do is leave that exactly as it is and save it as an SVG file. Uh, in, in Inkscape, SVG is the default format anyway. So I'm just going to go save as and I'm going to save it as face SVG and go save. And I'm just doing replace because I've already done this step before as well. And that's it. That's all you need to do to save out the sprite, nothing else to do. And now I'm going to take my character back into the composer mode in Cartoon Animator. So we open up the composer again. And there's two ways you can replace sprites in Cartoon Animator. You can actually do it through the layer menu here or the layer window. But I found replacing the actual face shape uh, is one thing that uh, you can't really do through the layer menu. Everything else I think you can, but not for the face shape. So all we need to do is select the face. So just make sure we've got talking head selected and that'll make the sprite editor come up. So we'll open up the sprite editor and make sure we're on the face tab. Uh, make sure you're on the front facing uh, face, not one of these side ones where you see you get the side view versions of the face. You want to be on the front view so that you get the original sprites and just select the face and you'll see we've got the face sprite here and all I want to do is replace that sprite so we're going to go in here replace current sprite and we're going to open up the face SVG file that I saved from Inkscape. Go open and you'll see the sprite has now been replaced with my round face but you'll notice here it's way too small so all we need to do is resize it from within the sprite editor we just grab the corner handles and you'll see this thing moving out get it to about where we want it looks pretty good to me but i'm going to just zoom in a little bit you can see his face a bit better we'll go back into the sprite editor I can adjust the face sprite. I think it's about in the right spot. About there. I think I want this parting on his hair to be about there. And just test how that looks 
by previewing it in the 360 head creator because this is a 360 head character. So I'm just going to hit preview. And that doesn't look too bad. His ears aren't disconnecting or anything. I'm pretty happy with that. There we go. That's his whole face sprite customized to a custom shape. It's still a vector shape. The whole character is still a vector. So if I exit the composer now, you'll see there he's now got the same round face as the one I created a bit earlier. And you'll see if I zoom in on this character. Zoom right in on his face. You'll see as with the zoom in, the lines are staying sharp once the little vectorizing thing is what a uh, meter thing has done its stuff. So there you go. That's how you customize, can customize your vector characters without losing their vector format. So there you go. I hope you found this short tutorial informative. Hopefully Real Illusion will be uh, adding the ability to export your vector characters directly to your vector software in the future. But for now we have this workaround, which is a slight improvement on what we had prior to this update where you couldn't export a vector character to any kind of graphics software at all. So this is a bit of an improvement and it gives you a workaround in customizing vector characters without losing their vector format. So that's it for this tutorial. Hope you found it useful and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.